Hello again everyone, I wanted to do a quick follow-up to my previous video where we talked about what would happen to celestial objects within our solar system if the sun were to suddenly vanish and its gravitational forces no longer had any effect on any of the celestial objects within it. What we discovered was that all the celestial objects would go off at tangent away from uh, the point at which the gravity no longer existed, and our moon would continue to rotate around Earth because nothing would have been um, pushed upon it or sped it up enough to break free of the Earth's gravitational pull. The question came up in our discussions by Cheyenne, Desiree, and Megan, and I apologize if I said any of those names wrong, essentially asking or stating the moon would continue to orbit around us until a object with a much larger gravitational pull came close enough to pull the moon out of orbit. And I just wanted to fire up our simulator and test out to see exactly what would happen. So what we've got here is obviously our Earth and the moon. The moon is orbiting around the Earth. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go to our simulator and we're going to add some planets. We're going to start with the smallest and we're going to work our way up until the moon is actually yanked away from Earth. So we're going to just start with Mercury. And we are going to put it about, you can see the Earth is at the center of this square. We're going to aim to just put these at the center of the next square over. Um, that will put the objects slightly further out than the actual moon is from the Earth, but we'll be able to see the gravitational forces that go any further. So we're going to go ahead and add Mercury and see what happens. As you can see, at the moment, there's no impact, but we're only moving at 58 minutes per second right now. So we're actually going to go ahead and speed this up just a little bit until we get to the point where the moon is going to make one full orbit. Oh, there goes Mercury. Looks like it's on its way to actually go into orbit around the Earth as well. Just a little bit more. We're at two days per second right now. Oh, and you can actually see the trail that the moon was pulling has actually been impacted by the introduction of Mercury. We're actually getting a bit of a spiral here, and Earth itself is actually being pulled towards Mercury, which makes sense, as we also discovered in class, when two objects are placed in space, they will start moving towards each other. So that's essentially what's happening here. It's actually put the Earth into a bit of a, a crazy spiral. So, um, But it doesn't look like it's done anything to impact the Moon's actual orbit around the Earth yet, although they're getting closer here, So all while Mercury is getting closer. Let's see. Let's just speed this up a little bit more. Right a bit faster now. And while the moon has definitely had its orbit impacted, it still continues to orbit around Earth. So Mercury isn't big enough to break the moon away. All right, let's go ahead and slow this down. We're going to reboot it, and we're going to try Venus and see what happens. So let's go ahead and open up another Earth moon. We're going to zoom out, and again, we're just going to go add. We're going to add Venus this time. And just like with the last experiment, we're going to add it at exactly one square away. And we're going to speed up the simulation to be about a half a day per second. And we're just going to see what happens. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. That's, that's all it took. Oh, my word. <laughs> That's crazy. Let's slow this down a little bit. Wow. So we're actually going to do that one again because that happens so quickly. Um, as you could see, Venus, which is actually smaller than Earth, um, was able to snatch away our moon, and our moon is now in a very, very, very tight spiral orbit around Venus. So it's pretty interesting. And the Earth actually got yanked around quite a bit too. So let's do that one again. Let's slow it down just a little bit. So what, from what we can tell from this, it's actually not going to take something with a larger gravitational pull than Earth, because even with Venus being further away than, um, further away from the moon than Earth was, it appears to have snatched away the moon. You can already see the moon starting to swing out further away. The Earth is actually heading towards Venus as well. And at this point, that's when it takes place. Oh, the moon slingshots around Venus. The Earth is chasing Venus. This is pretty interesting. Oh, another slingshot. There we go. Oh, this time, 
Earth simulation. It looks like the moon actually got too close to Venus, and we've just got remnants. The moon got too close to Venus. We just have remnants of the moon remaining. So, again, this is a simulation, and obviously each time we've ran it, it's acted a little bit differently. But from what we can tell, Venus, which has a mass of 81% of the Earth, was enough even being further away from the Earth than um, from the Moon than the Earth was, was enough to enact enough gravitational forces on both to cause all sorts of havoc. The Earth is still fine. Our Moon is in a billion little bits orbiting Venus now, though. So, good to know. I think that answers our question. Have a good day, folks.